Well, good morning, everybody. How are we doing? Do we have? Yes, we do. All right. So, how many people have been watching the closed captioning all weekend? Yeah? Do we like that? I've had a lot of people ask me, how, you know, what software is that? That's not software, that's meatware. There's actually a person on the other end of the wire that is typing that in. And they've been um, obviously very patient and probably doing, uh, typing things that they normally don't type out in a regular day to day. So why don't we take this opportunity and ask our uh, person doing the transcriptions, what have you thought of the uh, conference so far? <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, since this has been going on, it's really helped out and it's really added to the conference experience for everybody. And we're really glad that you guys have been putting in the time to uh, to help us out. So let's let's give them a round of applause one more time. Great. Next, uh, Jeff and Rob are going to talk about uh, web browsers and um, uh, encryption. And um, we're, we're, we're at a spot where a lot of people, certainly our Muggle friends at home, still look for the, uh, you know, the little green lock. If it's, if, it's, if it's got the green lock, it has the same security banks use. Therefore, it's secure, right? Military grade. Military, military grade. Military yes. Grade. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to talk about uh, why that may not be the case and maybe some things that we can do to uh, make sure that uh, when you see that little lock that it might mean a little bit more that it's locked. Let's give uh, Jeff and Rob a big hand. All right. Thank you. I hope that's not premature. What's it? I said I hope that's not premature. Uh, yeah, no, I'd, I'd hold your applause till you see what happens. Uh, first, I'd like to, uh, you know, say I'm sorry uh, to the person typing everything I'm about to say. Uh, so, um, you know, welcome to uh, the TLS Canary, uh, which is our project uh, that we started doing, and it is the theme of keeping your dick pic safer. I don't mean to look relaxed, but this is really the only way I can talk into this mic, so it's, uh, we're going to have a little intimate conversation going on here. So uh, a little bit about us. Uh, I am Evil Rob, Rob Bathurst. You may see me uh, walking around. I'm the director for healthcare and biomedical security for a antivirus company called Silence, except it's not McAfee Symantec or any of those other things. I don't mean to insult your company, but your product kind of sucks. Um, so I will turn it over to Jeff real quick. I'm Zathan. I'm Jeff Thomas. I uh, do stuff with computers. <laughs> and he is barely awake, I assure you. Uh, so I, I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you all decided to make it here in uh, you know a semi-conscious, hungover, or fully awake uh, kind of state. Uh, this is one of the greatest quotes in all of uh, reporting. I, I think that uh, that there could be. Uh, how many of you saw the actual interview that that this was taken from? Was it not amazing? I mean, it was it was truly the the best thing. I was riveted the entire time. Because aside from the quantum project and everything else the NSA runs, I truly want to know whether my dick pics are being collected. The answer is always yes. The answer is always yes. So, you know, we, uh, we want to talk about, uh, you know, better ways to take those dick pics that are being collected so analysts aren't bored and, you know, generally intrigued. What angle you should take them at, if it's better from the side or up top. You know, uh, always put a penny or, or something next to it just to, you know, en enhance that. So, realistically, you know, why, why are, you know, why this, why this project? Um, you know, things we like ourselves, obviously. Some of you, a very small percentage, but, you know, you're out there. And uh, systems that are not built on blind trust. Uh, I mean, the, the whole reason we, we started looking into this and the, the whole reason that we, we built this project is because a lot of the infrastructure behind the internet was a, an add-on and an a, in addition well after the fact. They're like, oh, yeah, okay, so I can see that web page, but I, I really need to transmit something securely. Well, we could re-engineer it. Or just tack it on. It, it's fine. It's fine. So we'll just use the same communications mechanisms and protocols and we'll throw some things in it that we'll sign some stuff and yeah, it's all great. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's no other system out there like that other than, you know, the, the PKI. Other than uh, everything. 
Oh, well, geez, yeah, I, I was trying to give him benefit of the doubt. Um, you know, things we don't like ourselves, which is why we put on this talk, uh, more of you, and, uh, you know, things that, that fail without warning. Um, you know, I'm okay for systems that have failures and, and flaws and errors, um, as long as they warn and yell and scream when, when those errors actually occur, uh, unlike most things. Uh, so, so why? Uh, you know, I, I'm sure a large percent of you are familiar with the, the DigiNotar. Uh, it was compromised by a lone Iranian hacker. An, an entire registrar, one guy. He's just like, you know what? I'm bored today. I could uh, look at 4chan or I could go hack in and uh, issue a bunch of uh, certificates for no purpose other than boredom. Um, you know, 531 of them, I believe, was the, the count that we came up with. Uh, and it was used to intercept uh, Gmail users in Iran and only Iran. You compromise an entire registrar or an entire certificate authority and that's all you do with it. Happen. I'm not sure it what just happened. Blank. We'll call that uh, technical failure. Try yeah. again. Because about that time frame, there was a little. There were some things going on, and intercepting Gmail is what hackers do when they're really bored. And yes, th this fun this on the was this was on a bored Saturday night. He's like, you know what? I I hate these people, and I just want to read their email. Uh, you know, second thing, Turk Trust, right? Uh, two intermediate root certificates were issued out of this. They were used to man in the middle wildcard, google.com. Wildcard, google.com. I mean, how could that ever be a bad thing, right? I mean, obviously, Google doesn't mind. Um, and it was detected by some of the technology built into Chrome uh, with the, the pinning they do with their certificates. So only their applications will trust it, and we'll talk about pinning. Um, but, you know, just a quick precursor what we'll be talking about you know Google's done a lot of work in this and uh, you know what we're doing is not to detract from anything we're doing uh, anything they're doing it's just their project's going to take a long time uh, to get uh, to the end and obviously issuing the man in the middle certificates for Google with a wild card was for totally legit purposes like this uh, the another instance we were able to pull up is the Brazil Ministry of Mines and uh, the Brazil Ministry of Mines and Energy, uh, allegedly, alleged, allegedly, alleged. Um, it was used to target individuals and organizations with the same thing. You know, it's the same theme we keep going over. Your entire certificate system is based on trusting someone. Seriously, like that right there is is the the epitome of everybody. They're like, don't worry, it's safe. It's full of kittens, and there's nothing that could possibly go wrong. And, you know, what we like to point out is these are just the attacks that are public, ones we know about because someone detected them, Google detected them, Microsoft detected them, or there was some system out there, some organization looking out for, realistically, their own self-interest. They weren't looking out for you. They were looking out for reputation damage. They were looking out for protecting their systems. They're going to say they're looking out for you, but realistically, there's not a lot of systems out there to protect you as an individual and it'll give you the power to figure out what's going on. You know, CAs are run by companies, agencies, people, organizations, staffs. Um, you know, how many of you work in a corporate environment where they're like, we're just going to load our certificate on it and it's cool? You know, it's, you'll get some email from it. It'll be great. We can contact you whenever we want. And don't worry, we're not doing anything we shouldn't. Um, but all people, regardless, and all organizations are vulnerable to coercion, corruption, uh, common mistakes, uh, issuance of bad certificates because they got lazy that day. Um, and so those, those are things you, you really need to look at with this type of infrastructure. Um, and it, it, it's just computers and software and a bunch of signatures and hashes and things that get moved around. And, and the way the system is built is we just blindly accept that. Um, and, and from an attacker's perspective, and I'm not saying the bored Iranian hacker by himself, but, you know, from an attacker in general that may want to do a, a mass collection or a government agency or something like that, uh, CAs are high value. Uh, they are absolutely high value because if you can get to the root CAs or even the intermediary CAs, you have a tremendous amount of power over anyone who has to ca connect and authenticate uh, through those, uh, those CAs, which is basically everyone. 
We've also extended certificates to be used for other purposes, such as uh, software signing, uh, things that can actually be embedded in your operating system. Uh, being able to subvert those has a, a proven track record of, of allowing you to do some very nasty things. Or even as we're going to bring up an example, uh, your citizenship to a country is controlled by a PKI certificate. So, you know, what is a certificate? And, you know, I'm not going to bore you with all the details of what a certificate is, but in general, uh, it verifies ownership or key, uh, of a key associated with a resource. Um, it's issued by a certificate authority at some level uh, that is, is, is trusted. Trusted. And uh, they are used on your computers. They're used in applications. They're used on your cell phones. They're used for software updates. They're used for, you know, basically anything that we're like, we need to establish a unique identity of some kind at a high level. You know, so how does it work? Well, again, it's all built on trust. It doesn't actually work and it's super broken, but I can't go out and say that right away because uh, then I sound like a pessimist. Uh, so legit certs are signed by a trusted CA, uh, in this case, like a GeoTrust or a VeriSign or, you know, the, the large ones that collect lots of money for doing this, you know, time and time again. Uh, our browsers that are trust by any or trust anything that is signed by these CAs uh, by default uh, because they are inside of our, our root of trust inside the browsers, cell phones, et cetera, et cetera. Sessions get negotiated by magic. I say that because my talk is not to talk about how broken TLS and SLL are as a protocol, uh, just the infrastructure around them. And then after you get that uh, that lock symbol or you get that, uh, you know, it's all good, you're free to send your very secure dick pics through them. Uh, and that's that's really what we're here for. And from the user's, user's perspective, they've been trained. If you see the green lock, I mean, this is a considered progress in that if they see the green lock, they know it's okay to type in their password. They know it's okay to do their banking or whatever else they're doing online. Yeah. So if you get on the DEF CON open network and you see the green lock, you're good to go. Nothing bad is happening. You know, Bally's just wants to make sure that you have the room number and credit card associated with wherever you happen to be all the time. You know, so, you know, we call this, you know, the, the, the chain of fools, right? It's, it's, I'm trusted by the world as the root CA for whatever I'm doing. You pay me some money. Uh, you know, it's a lot of hard work to sign those certificates. So I sign your cert. I take your money. Your cert's now trusted by anyone who trusts me, which, by the way, is everyone because I'm in your root store doing whatever I do. Uh, and now you can say you're whoever you asked to be. You know, in the case of the, the man in the mill attacks on the wild card for Google.com, a computer that uses that as a you know a reference for trust, or if you're being funneled into that uh, a proxy, you're not going to know. Your browser is going to give you the same "Hey, it's all good" as the search that that Google issues, um, and that's because to your browser, any of the 200 certs that it has loaded in its root store is legitimately okay to say that Google is this definite computer over here, not collecting your data whatsoever. So this is the example I brought up earlier. You know, I, I got to you know, credit Citrix for this, uh, th this picture that kind of proved my point. Uh, I think they were trying to sell one of their products to the Belgian government to help them uh, do uh, the CA infrastructure and verification. Uh, but you have the Global Sign Root CA, you have the Belgian Intermediary Root CAs, and you have a bunch of these citizen CAs down here that verify the citizenship of the, the individual down at the very bottom, the army of people. Um, so if you were to take control of one of those Belgian CAs or one of the citizen CAs that has the ability to say, this person, this EID is legitimate and they are a citizen, you know, what, what implication does that have for border control? What implication does that have for actually verifying whether or not somebody is who they say they are? Because you know you, you've been trained not to be able to trust the, the physical picture. You've been trained not to, to be able to trust the, the, the paper in front of you because how, how easily forged it is. You know, if you had control of one of these, these CAs, it's like six lines of code and you've generated a citizen. You know, I say this in a very broad kind of way, but that's, that's the, you know, the, the world is on fire perspective uh, in, in this type of example. This also highlights the level of trust that we put in technology and, and this system, this very complicated system of systems in that we can, they, they feel they can rely on it to make high level decisions or to, to, to do a high level verification of uh, someone's identity and someone's citizenship. 
Yeah, and it, it's it, and it's not like you can harden these CAs and stick them away and you know you know put them somewhere no one can touch them, uh, because at some point it has to connect to another system, to another system, to another system that's going to tell you where the one with the keys is hiding, you know, and and then you can target that organization and do, you know, I'm sure there's been 50 other talks uh, already about that type of stuff, which, but you know that that is the the root and and the sequence of trust that that is the world we live in today. So, you know, again, I'm going to do a basic overview of things. We have HTTP, POP3, MONA, SMTP, FTP. Um, they're not an encryption mechanism. They were never designed to be encryption systems. They were, they were communications protocols. Yeah, at the beginning, you know, everything is all about how do we talk. You know, anytime an application developer built a program, it's like, how do I get A to B? Okay, I got A to B. My design goal is done. Uh, shit, security's here. Uh, okay, I need to go A to B in a somewhat secure way. So we'll just use SSL certificates and then TLS. And you know, it's it's cool. It's fine. It's fine. And you know, we'll just forget about it. There's some security strapped on. It's great. But at the core, into the, uh, at the core of the problem, at the end of the day, everybody's just concerned with how do I get A to B? How do I get the dig pick here to here? And how do I make it look good? Like, I mean, that is really the concern people have. You know, so how do those secure tubes work, right? You know, it, it's SL, SSL. It, it came from Netscape. Like, seriously, this stuff was tacked on. If you watch uh, Moxie's talk back in 2011, he found the actual doctor from Netscape and not the MD kind, the PhD kind, that actually wrote the original SSL libraries and everything else. And he admitted yeah, we just tacked it on. Like, somebody's like, hey, we need some security, we'll just band-aid it to the side, and, and that, that was 1.0. Um, you know, since then, you've had the RFC 6101, 6176, and the TLS 1.3, which is the new, new draft coming out. Um, and if you really want to read them and need some bedtime reading, I by all means, go ahead. And it's um, also, it's not hyperbole to say that SSL is the reason we have the internet we have today. We're business can be conducted because people feel, actually feel safe putting their credit card online and, and giving it to a website because they know, they know, they see the green lock and that their uh, credit card can't be stolen. Yeah, and you know, I, I, anyone who says that uh, marketing doesn't deserve money has not been paying attention. Because um, seriously, you can, you can sell ice to an Eskimo if, if you know, you have the right marketing guys. So, you know, what, why is it old and busted, you know, from a protocol perspective? It's SSL has a problem with using identical keys for messages and encryption, lack of protection from the handshake, and, you know, I'm not going to list out specifically what version uses what, but it's vulnerable to truncation attacks, weak cipher suites, you know, problems with RC4. Um, and, and something about a poodle? Something about a poodle and a beast and a something fire sheep, and it just, uh, creative names, really, but, yeah. And, you know, TLS, they're like, oh, TLS is, TLS is the, the solution. It, it's not SSL, and it took researchers, I don't know, like a year to be like, and it's just as broken as it was before. Um, but it's broken in new and interesting ways. And ultimately, it still rides on the same certificate authority infrastructure. Right. It doesn't matter if we create TLS 55. It's still using the same certificates issued by the same things with the same problems that we were discussing before. So, interception. I can't play the music. It's, it's I, I know. We were going to do, like, the serious gopher, like, the dun-dun-dun, but unfortunately, like, it's not quite conducive to what we're working with. Um, but iOS, you know, when I did an inventory of iOS, it trusted about 226 certificate authorities. About. I, I, I didn't get an exact count. Uh, at the, the version I had last looked at. But you can go to Apple. They list all the ones they look at. My favorite is the Hong Kong Post Office. So if the Hong Kong Post Office wants to be Google one day, they can be Google. Um, fire trucks, uh, fire, Firefox trusts about 180. You can go to that link. Again, they will list all of them. And it, it is nice from a transparency perspective that most of these manufacturers of various systems actually list out the certificate authorities in their in their their route um unfortunately it's still a shitload um and there's more that get added every day countries can be like you know what uh, i need you to trust these five organizations and the browser for you know interoperability's sake has to put them into their route 
Um, it's very rare, and I think Microsoft was one of the first people to do it, to actually pull certificates out um, during a, a refresh. Uh, you know, one of the things to consider, too, uh, from an issuance of certificate authorities is, is they're subject to many laws. They're subject to local laws, state laws, federal laws, international laws, you know, what have you. If an organization decides that, uh, you know, for lawful purposes they want to do some form of interception, they do all their government forms and you tell me SCA in the world is going to be like, no, you know, I'm just not going to comply with this. Um, and, you know, it, it only takes one. It only takes one globally trusted root authority to issue a bad certificate for lots and lots and lots of people to have a very bad time. And if you've never looked at the list uh, and you want to feel a little more paranoia, I do recommend go to one of these links. Go to the, uh, just Google it. Look for yourself. You can see uh, which certificates Chrome trusts, which certificates Firefox, which ones are embedded in Windows and the other various OSs. And you can see just how many root authorities there are and the global span. They're in so many different countries under so many different jurisdictions. It's, it's, it'll, it'll make you worry. And, you know, something to also consider that, that we didn't actually bring up in a because it's kind of a corner case, the computers you're using, the manufacturers can put their own certificate on it and basically tell that system to trust it no matter what for updates and everything else at Lenovo. <clears throat> yeah, nobody so, would ever do that. Um, but that type of, of activity, whether malicious or not, if implemented incorrectly, can wreak havoc. Uh, in, in terms of what gets trusted, you know, if you could possibly be intercepted while not actually realizing what's happening. Um, so, I, there is a subversion of secure communications in, in the sense that there's basically two categories. There's the legal reasons to do it. You know, you all go to work and you decide, I want to use a work computer and they make you sign some forms and they're like, okay, we can monitor everything you're doing. You hit a blue code, you hit some other appliance, it proxies it out, yes, you realize you're being watched. Doesn't stop people from browsing porn. I mean, seriously. But I, I've spent the past you know, five or six years of my professional life recommending that a lot of places do this because it's a good thing if you have to protect a corporate network and you have good policies in place, you're subverting you know, the security that's inherent uh, into, into the, uh, the communication protocol. Right. I mean, it would be ideal to have it end-to-end, -end, but that doesn't work for most corporations, you know, which is why you get to, to load balancers. You front-end offload everything out, and now all of a sudden it's only secure from this point to this point, or it's only secure till it hits the perimeter, and now it's no longer secure. So while you're browsing Gmail or anything else, it's all in the clear text on the inside of the network. Um, and, you know, and the, the last potentially re you know, reasonable expectation is, is a government request Although, I mean, that has its own geopolitical issues that are not really, you know, something I want to get into. Which so, leads us to the next category. Which is the next category, the not so good, but maybe secretly legal. Um, you know, the ver government request versus government demand. Uh, criminals, you know, the lone Iranian hacker that wants to break into something. And my personal favorite, advertisers. It's much easier if you're not secure to target more ads to you, which makes more money for them, which makes more money for other people, and so on and so forth. Um, but they, they have a, a secret agenda, uh, or not so secret agenda, to, to make sure that I they're able money to serve was up ads. What's that? I, I didn't know money was secret. Well, they like to play it off as it's better for you in the, the freemium economy. Um, but uh, yeah, a good example of this is actually uh, uh, no script. Uh, no script, I believe, or Adblock Plus, one of the two, uh, is is working on what constitutes a good advertisement, um, and what can go through because it's not obtrusive. Um, and and these are systems that we are relying on to protect ourselves from uh, malicious drive-bys and all kinds of other attack techniques that we're hoping these block. But then we're like, well, it's okay because this advertiser is only it's a static content. There's nothing bad that can occur here. Um, and, and that's the same type of approach we're taking with the PKI and everything else. Uh, is it's okay because somebody else has our best interest in mind. And the depressing reality check, yeah, most people are just conditioned to click okay, and then when something bad happens, they look like this guy over here. You know, their this credit happens, you, we all, you all know this, that, that people are the weak link, always. 
Yeah, I, I mean, the, this 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 poor sheep's uh, credit card was used in Bulgaria, and uh, the bank won't give him back his money, and that's how he looks in the end. So, solutions, right? You know, I stand up here, and it's a doom and gloom perspective for everything and anything. Um, the Convergence Project, which is what we mentioned earlier, uh, Moxie did uh, back in the day, I highly recommend going to look at it. Um, it, it's some, some great work. It takes a different approach uh, to, to what we were really attempting to do in, in, in our Band-Aid. Um, and then, you know, the more encompassing project, uh, the Certificate Transparency Project, uh, Google, you know, they have some power. I'm just going to put it out there. Um, but the CertificateTransparency.org, while not fully implemented or uh, public in any way, um, in the sense that they have something that you can just grab and easily insert into everything you're doing, um, they do have it built into Chrome. Uh, they do use a, a, a certificate extension for things they control called the uh, HSTS, uh, which allows them to do a, a form of pinning that allows them to say, this is definitely a trusted certificate that I issued and I know nobody is subverting it and uh, it belongs to me. Uh, of, I highly recommend you go look at it. One of the problems with the current infrastructure. Oh, I, I, thank you. What was that? What was the... uh, it was H... HTKP. P. Thank HP you. KP, thank you. Sorry. You mean my you can't remember is, everything? I, I got all my stuff stolen at Mandalay Bay uh, by a very enterprising thief. Hey, hey, we haven't got to that slide yet. Come but on. But I haven't gotten to that slide yet, so I'm a little, uh, little frazzled that has had to rewrite a bunch of plugins in the past 24 hours. Um, so one of the problems with the current infrastructure is that a certificate can be issued in secret. There's no way to uh, see that a certificate has been uh, generated. So these, uh, the 531 in the previous examples and God knows how many others have, that have been generated uh, exist and they won't be noticed until something goes wrong, until uh, a, a user notices that the certificate is issued by the wrong uh, uh, civil authority, which just doesn't happen. Or uh, they try to use try to hit Google, which uses certificate pinning, which is a great way to detect when uh, some chicanery is going on. Uh, the cool thing about this, the certificate transparency project is that certificates can't be issued in a vacuum. Uh, all the peers that are involved in the system, uh, the, the, the transactions are visible and public. And because they're public, they can be verified or they can be noticed when, when something uh, bad happens. Exactly. Go look at it seriously. Very in cool. the end, it's going to be you know it's going to be that or a project like that that really fixes a, a lot of the issues associated with the uh, infrastructure we're using. So uh, pinning, uh, basically, uh, it's a every application inside should be using a form of pinning, but it is a little uh, cumbersome to actually get done. But at the core of it is trust this and only this certificate to say that I am who I am. Um, this model works really well with uh, mobile apps that are you know, dedicated to your Facebook app on your phone or Twitter. It's easy to pin a certificate in the app because the app developer is the one providing the service so that they can actually embed that and it's truly end-to-end. -end. Yeah, and it is great. Like, when it works, it works. Um, unfortunately, it is relatively hard to configure. If you go out to, like, OWASP, they tell you how to do the pinning and it's this giant web page and... You know, from a normal administrator's perspective whose day job is not to deal with this type of thing, it's going to turn into the one of those I could but type of situations, uh, which is what, in the end, we really do not want. Uh, implementation varies, uh, obviously. The, the Google I had mentioned and incorrectly acronymed. Uh, and then uh, the example I had mentioned before, the Hong Kong Post Office cannot issue a cert for your send my dick pick application, uh, which is really what we're here for in the end. So, caveats. We're not developers, we're hackers. Uh, I, I write scripts to achieve an end goal. Uh, I write code to achieve an end goal. I don't write code to do enterprise products, uh, which is why we are uh, you know, putting this out there in an open format so others that may want to contribute to the project uh, can really contribute. We uh, have no power. I do not represent Google or Microsoft or the IETF or anyone like that. Uh, we are simply trying to find a temporary solution to a what seems to be permanent problem uh, that, that we can go with. Uh, Canary, our, our application and our project, is, is not the solution, but it is a far leap better uh, than, than what is currently out there 
in the silently failing, you never know who you're trusting uh, type of uh, approach we're, we're using today. And yes, uh, I got robbed, uh, and uh, there are some various uh, uh, ideas as to how that occurred, uh, but the end result uh, is that stuff got stolen out of my room, and I lost my laptops and had to rewrite like three or four hundred lines of, of plugins last night. Uh, I obviously should have backed it up to Git or a repo of some kind prior to not realizing my stuff would be stolen. Uh, so... If it looks a little hodgepodgey in some of the upcoming things, it's it's because I, I was up most of the night writing them. Uh, so, our goals. We want to protect your dick pics from board analysts. Uh, if you need dick pic consulting, it's not us, but uh, you know we'll, we'll try and protect them uh, if somebody were to get a hold of them. In transit only. Um, user awareness. You know We want to make sure that you realize the site you're going to and the certificate chain you're looking at is actually a legitimate one that you are going to, you know, you're going to and the one you want to be at. And really, stopping shady shit. I mean, come on, like this, the whole infrastructure we're on is meant to be, you know, is meant to be a good idea and turned into a horribly abused idea. Um, it's so, meant to be trustworthy. Yeah, it, it, it's meant to be trustworthy. So what the tool does, uh, the tool is built in kind of a client-server model, uh, and we built it that way so you could specifically leverage our infrastructure and build your own plugins and do whatever you want to do, and we'll show that here in a second. Um, at the base, it does a cert diff in comparison uh, between what you see uh, on your end of the browser, the plugin, the application, and what our distributed system of servers sees. Uh, so you go out, and it basically uh, will keep the, it will collect your cert chain locally, send it to our server, compare the cert chains. If they match, hey, you're good. If it doesn't match, hey, you might have a problem. Uh, you know, that is that is version one. That is what it does. It tells you, hey, you have a problem because what you're seeing is not what the rest of the world sees. It's maybe where the name came from. So if, if the canary dies, then you have a problem. Yes. No one wants to kill the tiny, fat, cute bird, but if it dies, it dies. Um, so what it doesn't do, protect you from compromised sites. I cannot tell you that Facebook.com is jacked up if Facebook.com is jacked up around the world. Uh, it does not protect you from subpoenas. Warrants, people kicking down your door, someone hacking the, you know, someone uh, controlling the AS from a BGP routing perspective, and it will not encrypt or protect your dick pics at rest. Uh, that is not what our application does, but I'm sure someone else is willing to sell you something that will. Yeah, all Canary does is provide uh, multiple perspectives. So if, if your link is being hijacked or intercepted or routed through a transparent proxy, uh, you can submit a query to Canary, which one of our distributed servers will be outside of your jurisdiction and compare what you see to what the globe sees, what the world sees. And if they're different, then there's probably something going on, something wrong. And, and we are going to release the, the server code onto our repo. So if you want to spin your own up, you can spin your own up. Um, and if you're like, well, obviously some nefarious organization could just spin up a bunch of these servers and put them somewhere they control, control. but realistically, uh, I, I'm not that interesting. So I, I doubt that they might do that. But if everyone adapts to it, maybe they will. Who knows? Um, so the goal is a globally distributed network outside the jurisdiction of one individual organization power agency control area you know what have you um, it is scalable uh, it's designed to be able to uh, accept many 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 requests per second and the return is basically a one or zero it's good or it's bad um, that that's that's v1 uh, we're going to eventually hopefully build in you know a certificate history chain so it keeps track of if any of the changes uh, occurred anywhere in the chain or you know some of the more features for round robbing, uh, round robbing across the globe, uh, and stuff like that. If if uh, any of you heard of the SSL Observatory, a very cool project. Uh, one of the developers actually, I, I contacted him about using some of their code. We didn't end up using it, but what they do is they scan the uh, the internet looking for SSL web servers and gather those. Uh, certificates and keep them in a database and they've been doing that for a long time so they have uh, multiple snapshots and a running history of uh, SSL certificates or TLS certificates and we are, this, this the canary has a potential to do the same thing uh, but rather than doing the active scanning we're relying on user queries to, to build this database so it, it's going to be focused on the most uh, commonly used the most popular uh, websites yeah, and it's, it's not meant to be a, a scan over time, as, as Jeff was saying. It's meant to be a, as it happens. 
um, because I don't want to compare the cert from a month ago. I want to know exactly what you're pre being presented at this particular moment. So this is the JSON structure. This is basically it, and again, we'll release this, but this, this is all it takes to submit a query to our server and get a response back, whether or not it matches. I'd also like to take this time to thank Redbeard. He's, he is our silent third presenter here. He uh, was instrumental. I'm learning Go because of him. It is a very cool language. So, I am not learning Go. That, that yeah. Uh, he was instrumental in helping us get this done on time. So. Yes. I, I, I cannot thank my friends enough, uh, you know, Jeff and, and Redbeard and Forkus and you know, various other people who helped uh, my, uh, recover from the enterprising thief. Um, and, uh, you know, help actually make this uh, be possible. So I just want to say thank you to, to the man in the beard uh, up there. Please, I, I, I would just thank you. But if you look at the, uh, the JSON struct, it's very straightforward. Uh, we don't want your information. We don't want to log. And if you look at the code, it, there is no logging uh, other than a query was made. Uh, but all you have to do is in whatever language or tool you want, you can construct this uh, JSON struct that just has these fields in this form. Uh, we go out and grab the, uh, from the same website that's presented in the query, uh, grab the TLS certificate, compare it to what you gave to us. If it matches, we'll return a yes or a zero. If it doesn't match, we'll return a one. And it's as simple as that. Yeah, the only IP it ever, the only IP or name it ever keeps is the target that we have to pull the, server, the, the certificates from. It doesn't keep yours. It doesn't keep a history on anything else. And once we've, you know, pulled it, we just keep the host name and the certificate chain, and we don't really care about the, uh, the IP anyway. So, uh, if you want to move on, so this is uh, essentially a version. This is uh, the plugin I, I was writing last night. Essentially, it's a Firefox plugin. Uh, it turns out the NRO does not have a very secure website apparently. Uh, so your dick pics could potentially be stolen. Uh, when I uh, mostly because our system also detects it's HTTP versus HTTPS, and it's going to warn you the same way. Hey, this is insecure. Um, but it basically, it throws a red banner up around it, gives you a, a JavaScript alert. Because I don't know how many of you programmed Firefox extensions, but it's essentially JavaScript or Python or, or C, uh, depending on what you're trying to do with it. Uh, this particular add-on used JavaScript. It's like, hey, uh, the cert doesn't match. You know, there's no cert attached to it. Uh, hey, your dick pics could get taken by these guys. Although, I really want to meet you if they redirect a billion dollar intelligence satellite to get your dick pic. Uh, I think you would be a very interesting person to have beard with. Just saying. Phrasing. <laughs> Look, you know, uh, beer is beer. Uh, so, and, and essentially, the, the, the next version is, it, uh, we said it's a binary comparison, right? So it goes up, it hits it, it says yay, it says nay. So if you hit the next one, this is a good place to submit your dick pics. And the only difference being the green border in this case, I, again, I wrote the plugin to do red or green. Green border says, yes, we've taken the certificate chain. It matches what I see. It matches what the server sees. And when it did the comparison, it's like, cool, if you want to put your dick pic here, it will, it will be protected by you know, the same certificates that you're seeing that we're seeing. And this, um, is, this is where real developers can, can actually contribute because in, uh, we know Firefox and we can see there's, there's hooks for intercepting uh, SSL calls. We can intercept the, query, the, the web requests before they go out. And if the certificate chain doesn't match, then we can block them. But when you're dealing with a uh, Android or iOS, it's a lot more difficult to intercept transitions before. So if you open up your uh, browser and try to log into your bank or to whatever, uh, your password could be transmitted before uh, Canary knows that something has, has gone wrong. So your credentials have been compromised, your activity has been logged, and it, it, it didn't serve its purpose. Yeah, and it, it, the browsers are okay. Uh, there's stuff actually <laughs> built in from Netscape libraries uh, that can allow you full control over some of the stuff with Chrome, some of the stuff with Firefox. Uh, but it really is, as, as Jeff was saying, uh, the, the applications where you know, iOS has a tight control over execution and network hooks that it becomes a more after the fact warning that we're, we're trying to work with and, and get around. So uh, why use it, right? You know, the whole of everything, uh, you know, why use it? It's here to provide awareness. It's here to provide 
hey, something isn't right. I, I'm looking at a pro. I, I'm w looking at this site, and it's not matching. Is it just me? Is it the rest of the world? What's going on? Um, we don't want silent failures. We want bright, screaming, red, flaming, lights on fire failures, uh, where it's become really obvious. It's super lightweight. Uh, the whole point is for you to take the code examples, take whatever we have, take it, throw it in, do it yourself, uh, or use what we have. Uh, we don't cache data requests. We don't. Uh, we might start caching observe certs, uh, but that really has less to do with you and more to do with the you know, general infrastructure of the internet. Um, and we will never store your personal requests. And this is the uh, SSL Observatory Lite part of it, where it's, it's more of an intellectual curiosity and the, to be able to speed up if it does start becoming popular, God forbid, uh, being able to, to speed up the queries and also do correlation and uh, history. See, and when something changes, if it changes before the certificate expires, and just general tracking. Yeah, so why not use it? I mean, really, come on. I mean, that, that's what we're here for. That's why I spent all last night writing this crap, right? And he spent all week. Um, you know, no reason I can think of not to use it, uh, unless you don't trust us. Uh, I wouldn't really trust us, but, you know, that's why we're making it open source. That's why we're putting it out there for everybody. Go trust yourself. Look at the code. Figure it out. Does it work for you? Um, does it work for what you're attempting to do? Does it work for, you know, the goals you're trying to achieve? Uh, some people just don't care. And I can't change that opinion. Other people like myself like to know when their stuff's being messed with. Yeah, we didn't write this for just the general masses of users. But if you are truly concerned, if you have a reason to be concerned, like if you disagree with your government and want to, you know, change it somehow, some governments don't like that. And some governments take uh, affirmative action in that uh, to um, uh, limit your capability and limit your ability to communicate in private. And... Or if you're just on the DEF CON network. I mean, yeah, that too. Either or. So uh, this is where you can find it. Uh, the tlscanary.net uh, is where we're going to end up tossing, uh, you know, instructions, kind of user guides here and there, what it's meant to do, some observations. Right now it's just some plain text. And then GitHub is where you can pull the source from that we'll be uploading uh, probably tomorrow or Tuesday. Um, but that's going to have the when server. When you get your laptop back. When I get my new laptop shipped in um, but uh, it, it should uh, it'll contain client code server code our Firefox example hopefully our Chrome example um, and some of the code we we're working on to try to do the uh, applications uh, on the, the uh, iPhone Android platforms it is designed to be very lightweight if you want to spin up an uh, Amazon instance uh, EC2 instance and run the code yourself and use your own private canary great have fun it, it works. Yeah, the, it, the, the request structure is so light, and what it's pulling is, is not even HTML content. It's just literally certificates. Um, so it's a very low transaction overhead if you want to run it yourself. So, Scotch and questions? Uh, it will say that a self-signed cert does not match what I see globally unless the server you're hitting is also the one that has the self-signed cert. Well, yeah, if, if you present us with a self-signed certificate and we see the same one, we tell you it matches. We don't care. That's not our problem. Yeah, if you trust it and you, well, all we're saying is it is a one-to-one, -one, and that's, that's what matters uh, from the application perspective. So this is uh, pretty cool stuff, guys. I was wondering if... Uh, kind of goes along with OCSP except for the fact that OCSP goes with certificate authority. This is kind of more to gathering intel across the community and sharing that information. And I was wondering if you guys thought about publishing this as part of an RFC to kind of standardize this as a method for additional checks. Because it would be really cool if this information, this intel starts getting out there to where people can start making decisions on certificate authorities and go, wait a minute, those certificate authorities are bad. We need to start disabling those certificate authorities and looking at those, monitoring those guys and say which ones are doing the proper things and which ones are not doing the proper things. And those ones, those are not doing the proper things, we just get rid of them. Sure. I, I mean, the, the, the potential's out there and, you know, it's all going to be open source. So the query structures and what we observe and everything like that is meant to be wholly transparent. Um, so if somebody with that authority wanted to go through and do that effort, we'd be more than happy to support you know that and provide whatever information we'd have to provide this is a band-aid this is, but this is it, a, a, it is a band-aid and will require someone with power to actually implement those type of process and protocols and, and procedures i personally 
personally rather see something like the uh, the Google Transparency Project move forward. Something that solves, and we're happy solves if the problem. someone from Google is here and wants to integrate this. We're cool with that too. Uh, something that, that that actually solves the problem and doesn't just you know put a band aid on it so that it lets you detect when the problem is being exploited. Firstly, thank you for helping to protect my dick pics. Well, that's what we're here for, right? You know, if your schlong transverses the internet unsecurely, it hurts all of us. So my question is, is did you guys contemplate uh, doing revocation checking also uh, as part of the canary exercise? So uh, I, I do have revocation checking actually built into the extension. Uh, the Canary project on its own is merely meant as a SIR comparison tool. Uh, revo uh, the revocation checking could be built into the server, but it's one more check that would slow it down. Whereas uh, if you're already utilizing the extension libraries, uh, it can do the revocation check before it pulls the SIR chain. So in, in the example of the Firefox extension, it would just check it, say it's bad, and not even bother sending the, the thing up. Yeah, we're not replacing, we're just augmenting. I'm curious in a compromised case where you have a, a mix of good state and bad state, how do you ultimately know what reality is? Are you just going by numbers? Seems like uh, since you're not logging all any kind of identifying information or tracking information for users that potentially maybe you know, your lone Iranian hacker can go and send you 5x the amount of data from their, the botnet that they personally run. Well, so uh, if, if for instance in the case, and I think I'm hearing you correctly, is you know, in, in the case of a mix, some things are bad and some things are good type of scenario, y you have to have basically a weighted algorithm that says 65% of the world sees it this way and if I have 300 sensors, what are the odds that 300 of my, you know, 65% of my 300 sensors are bad? Um, and, and there is something we were considering putting in is like the confidence of how good this is from what you're seeing. Uh, it's just in the V1 that it's not something we put in. Um, but we were thinking about that problem. It's just one of those at what point and what sample size do I need to actually achieve a confidence? And there's uh, also the implications way. of two jackasses being an arbiter of what's good and what's bad. Other than you send a query, we do our verification, and it's very simple. This JSON struct is very simple. It just presents the uh, certificates, the signature, the serial number. We verify if they match and send it right back. I think my point's just that fundamentally in saying you will not log session information, you're limiting yourself. There's a lot of nasty tricks you can do. Well, well I said we, we, we won't anymore. log your queries. I don't care where those queries come from, but when we do our own grab, we grab the certificates on our own, those will probably end up being cached at first just for efficiency and for, uh, for load balancing and for, for spreading the load. But in the long term, I'd like to do something like what SSL Observatory has already done and start building our own database and looking at how certificates change over time. It's just it, purely academic and also to try and enhance the service and make it you know, better. All right. Well, we're out of time. Come find us in the bar if you want, if you're still here. Uh, I appreciate your time and hopefully your dick pics will be safer in the future.